But our presentation tonight is discover how to get on and stay on the straight and narrow path. How to get on and stay on the straight and narrow path. Open your Bible with me to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation in the 12th chapter. Revelation chapter 12. Our presentation last night was God has a church on earth, no kidding. And we did our very best to communicate to you that God is not only calling people out of something, He's calling people into something. What is God calling people out of? Babylon, that's exactly right. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. Come out of her, my people. And of course, Babylon is the mother church, but you remember she has daughters, and those daughters are any church, any communion that have residual elements of paganism or papalism bound up with their various teachings. And so God says, come out of her, my people, that you partake not of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. And so here in Revelation chapter 12, and last night we asked the question, God is calling us out of something, but what is he calling us? in two. He not only shows us the exit sign, he shows us the entrance sign. And so in Revelation chapter 12, we pick it up in verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a what everyone? A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars. So I want you to notice that she is clothed with the sun and the stars and she has under her feet the moon. Those are the three things that God gave in the opening chapters of Genesis to bring light to this world. To bring what, everyone? Light. And so thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so this true church, these true people, would be spreading and illuminating this dark, dark world with the gospel truth. Verse 2. Then being with child, she cried out in pain and in, uh, in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red what, everyone? dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads and his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was what born, born. and who would that child be everyone Jesus, of course, in verse 5, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And so this woman here represents the true people of God. If you would like to use the word church, that's fine. But remember, of course, that Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was a what, everyone? He was a Jew. Now, there's no question, as we've already discussed, that Jesus had to make a transition. Remember at the beginning of his ministry? Take these things hence. You have made my father's house a what? Den of thieves. But at the close of his ministry, behold, your house is left to you what? desolate. And so here we find this woman representing that transition period, always God's true people, but you could say the Jewish nation transitioning into the church. Verse 6, it says, then the woman fled into the what? wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days. That's the 1,260 prophetic days or literal years of papal persecution when basically there was only one show in town. One show in town and there wasn't many, many different churches. There was the church and basically the church did not allow people access to the Bible and uh, the Bible was kept away from people in the common language, etc., etc. And more or less you were told that if you didn't bow, if you didn't capitulate, if you insisted on standing on something other than what the, doc, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cardinals were teaching and the priests were teaching and the others were teaching, you, you know, you could be uh, killed or you could be put into a dungeon or, or, or worse. And so many people fled this papal persecution and that's exactly what we find there in Revelation chapter 12 is that the woman would flee. The woman would want everyone flee. Now we jump down to verse 13 where we see this exact same imagery, identical imagery. It says, now when the dragon saw that he would, was cast to the earth, I'm in verse 13, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great what, everyone? Eagle that she might fly into the what? Wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. There it is again. Identical situation. God's true church fleeing from the face of the serpent, fleeing from the face of Satan who was persecuting her. Verse 15. So the serpent spewed what out of his mouth? Water. And water in Bible prophecy represents what? people. And so, and so the devil basically joined the church. You've heard the old saying, if you can't beat him, what do you do? You join him. That's exactly right. And so he spewed water out of his mouth. That is people to try and basically infiltrate and infect the true church of God, many of whom were hiding up in the northern valleys of, of uh, northern Italy and other places, people like the Waldensians and the Huguenots and the Albigenses, God's true people, who insisted on standing on the word of God and refused to capitulate to the various papal dogmas and decrees, etc. If we're all on the same page, say amen. So we continue on here. It says in verse 16, But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth. And what did it do, everyone? 
swallowed up the flood. And then it says, very interesting, swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And then verse 17, sort of the climax of Revelation chapter 12, and certainly the climax of the entire book of Revelation, right there in verse 17, it says, and the dragon was what? Wroth or enraged with the woman and went to make war with the rest of her seed, or if you have the King James, the remnant of her seed who keep the commandments of God and have the what? Testimony of Jesus. Now, I want you to remember way back, several meetings ago, probably 15 meetings ago, we looked at this war and we made this important point, and that is that the war, this great conflict, this great controversy began where? In heaven, you remember, but where is it going to be finished? on earth. And that's exactly what we discover here in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, is that when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, and we've already talked about that, he had some kind of limited access to heaven. But when he saw that he no longer had any access to heaven, he put all of his energies, all of his resources right here on planet earth to attack this remnant, this rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. To put it in very plain language, Satan's undiluted fury is being poured out upon God's true people at the end of time, if you believe that, say amen. And so, during the Dark Ages, God's church fled into the wilderness, as we have already said. Why did they flee to the wilderness? Because they had to. They had to flee to the wilderness, as we've already said. There was only one gig in town, only one church in town, and if you were unwilling to capitulate to the, to the various decrees and dogmas of the papal church, you had to flee. Uh, either it was either fleeing or, or facing punishment or death or, or some other terrible situation. So in Revelation chapter 12, the woman was persecuted by Satan. We talked about this last night. Basically, during the period of the Dark Ages, as people were going through the Reformation, the what, everyone? The Reformation, God was leading His people step by step by step by step out of Rome. Are we all together, everyone? We talked about this, how the Waldensians, they said the Bible and the Bible only. John Hess, Huss emphasized obedience. Martin Luther said the just shall live by what? Faith. And then he took that hammer and he nailed those 95 theses there to the door at Wittenberg. The hammer uh, uh, blows that were heard all around the world. John Calvin said Christian growth and God's sovereignty. The Anabaptist said it's not this sprinkling thing. And Scotty talked to us about that this morning. Baptism by immersion. John Wesley said holiness. He was referred to pejoratively by the, uh, 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 other, by the people that were his detractors as Methodists. But he actually took that term and he, he internalized it. He used it and they became known as the Methodists, even though originally it was actually a term of uh, derogatory term. William Miller with the Second Coming, the Advent Movement, the Sabbath, the Death and Health, 1800s to the present. Basically what you see here is that at different stages of coming out of Rome, many people, instead of continuing to march with truth, they set up their flag, they set up their banner, and they said, we're Lutherans, we're Calvinists, we're Presbyterians, we're Wesleyans, but truth was marching on. Can you say amen? And so what God is doing here is He is reforming. That's why it's called the Reformation. But He's not just reforming. He's restoring truth. Now, if that makes sense, I want you to say amen. Very, very interesting. And so here God is working, 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 bringing new truth, bringing new light, bringing new biblical insights. And then God opens up a whole new continent, a whole new hemisphere. And the church, who, who basically, uh, uh, as we've already discussed there in Revelation chapter 12, was very much under the persecution of both uh, you know, um, the, the kings and the monarchs and others and the popes. And so to flee both religious tyranny and civil tyranny, they came to a new land. Can you say amen? And that's why when they got off of those boats, beloved, many of them got down on the ground and kissed the ground because they were coming to a new place where they could escape the tyranny of the popes and the tyranny of the kings, and they established a new government. They established a what, everyone? A new government. A government that did not have subjects, but what? Citizens, a government of the people, what? for the people and by the people. And they said, no, 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 no. Religion is going to be over here and the state is going to be over here and it's imperative that they stay separate because every single time in past experience when religion and state had gotten together, they proved to be very unhappy bed partners. And they set up a whole new radically... I mean, the American experiment, just do a little bit of research, was a radical experiment in civil and religious liberty. And God opened up this whole new continent so that His people who wanted to worship Him in spirit and in truth had a place to do it. Can you say amen? And of course, today, the United States of America is the front runner of democracy. And not just the front runner of democracy, it's the most powerful nation in the world. 
I mean, think about that for just a minute. The meteoric rise of the United States is unprecedented in the history of the human experience. I mean, in 200 short years, it goes from basically non-existent to being the single most powerful nation that the world has ever seen. Beloved, if you don't see the providence of God in that, you can't see the providence of God anywhere. Are, we, are you hearing me, yes or no? Absolutely incredible. So tonight we're